This video introduces an application of differential equations, single compartment mixing problem. Well, basically, this is the problem when you need to find the functions for the amount of some pollutants that are entering in a container at a fixed rate and also flowing out at a fixed rate. Basically, we'll use the conservations of mass to model this situation. And the conservation of mass is the rate of change of some pollutants is the same as rate in minus rate out. Well, let's consider the, this the following example. We'll consider a fish tank that is initially contains 150 liters of water and 20 grams of salt dissolved in it. The salt concentration in the tank needs to be increased from 20 over 150 grams per liter to 1 gram per liter to accommodate a new species of fish. Water containing 3 grams of salt per liter is allowed to run into the tank at a rate of 2 liters per minute. The thoroughly stirred mixture in the tank is also allowed to drain out at the same rate of 2 liters per minute. Find a differential equation for the amount of salt S of t in the tank at time t. And then use the initial condition S of 0 equals to 20 to find the time it would take to increase the salt concentration in the tank to 1 gram per liter. Before any of the applications, you always want to identify the variables first. First, let S of t in units in grams be the amount of salt at time t and units in minutes. Let V of t be the volume right, of the water at time t, units in liters. Also, t is units in minutes. Well, identify the two questions. First, find ds of dt. Second, find t such that s of t over v of t equals to 1. Now let's go through the first sentence of the problem. Initially, the fish tank contains 150 liters of water. That means v of 0 is 150. And it contains 20 grams of salt. That means s of 0 equals to 20. Second, we want to talk about the rate in. Right? If you know that the rate in is the products of the rate of salt and the rate of water, if we pour in salt and water at the same time. So it's saying that the water containing 3 grams of salt per liter, which indicates the rate of salt, and it says allow to run into the tank at the rate of 2 liters per minute, which indicates the rate of water. And rate in now is 3 times 2, which is 6. And if you combine the two units together, the units for the rate in is grams over minutes, which makes sense. We want to modeling the amount of salt in grams over the time t, which is grams over minutes. That's rate in. How about rate out? So the next sentence is talking about the rate out, right? And the mixture in the tank also allowed to drain out at the same rate of 2 liters per minute. How can we find rate out? Similar to rate in, it's a product of the rate of salt and the rate of water. And in this case, the rate of salt is S of t over V of t. Well, S of t is a function that we're looking for, and V of t is a volume function that we already defined. And 2 liters per minute would be the rate of water for rate out. One thing that you want to pay attention is the rate of water uh, in rate in and rate out are the same. What does that mean? That means the volume of water in the tank is always 150 liters, which is the same as the initial volume, because we have the same rate. All right, let's summarize 
all that we have uh, learned. We have rate in, we have rate out, and we can finally find the differential equation for the amount of salt. The SDT equals to rate in minus rate out. And then we also have an initial value. When t equals to 0, s of 0 equals to 20 grams. So this is an IVB problem. Now, we want to solve for this problem. And we know that this is a separable equation. If we combine 6n negative s of t over 75, and then you move um, s and d of s to one side and d of t to another side, integrate both sides, and you can find uh, now net negative natural log of 450 minus s of t equals to t over 55 plus c. Okay, and then again the goal is to find s of t. Then you want to manipulate the natural log functions, um, raise both sides from e to get rid of the natural log, and then you move s of t to one side and to solve for c and solve for s of t. Once you have s of t, you use the initial value 0, 20. You plug 0 into t, you plug 20 into s to find c. And in this case, c equals to 430. So the functions that describes the amount of salt as time t is s of t equals to 450 minus 430 e raised to negative t over 75. Again, this is a separable equation. And we gotta know how to solve for a separable equation. All right, we get s of t. Now to answer the second question, find time t such that the concentration equals to one. Now we know s of t, we just need to plug uh, the function that we found for s of t over v of t, which is always 150, and set it equals to one. In this case, you can try to um, move e to the negative t over 75 to one side and then raise both sides uh, and then take the natural log of both sides to isolate t and to solve a t. And once you solve a t doing some calculation, t equals to around 27 minutes. So it takes 27 minutes for the concentration to reach to one gram per liter in this situation. And here is the uh, visualization of S of T. So this is the graph of S of T, the amount of salt that we found earlier. As we know that this is an exponential function, and this point right here, when T is around 27, the amount of salt is around 150 grams. That is when the concentration is about one gram per liter because the volume of the water is always 150 liters in this problem. And as you can see, this horizontal y equals to 450 grams is a saturation level. What does it mean? It means that as time goes by, the amount of salt will be reaching to this level. It tried to reach to a very close point to 450, but it will never reach this level. So that's why it's called the saturation level. Again, this is the visualizations of the solution that we found to the missing problem.